Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com and today we're going to finish, hopefully, the Kenwood 520S Arduino based frequency counter that we started back in April. It's now October. If you want to see videos 1 through 4, they're in the show notes. Uh, please get caught up. This is basically making a digital display frequency counter, what frequency you're transmitting and receiving on. For an old ham radio, only use dials and the dials are very fidgety and you really don't know what frequency you're truly on and this display will show you that. You could buy a product like this as we've said before, but this is about building this product. On the last video as we saw this proto board working, this is my input circuit that hooks up to the radio and then conditions these signals so that the Arduino can do the frequency counting for us. We had a little bit of sample software in there and then we were displaying that on on the computer and that was just proof of concept that wasn't that wasn't taking it to the next step which is kind of hard i was gonna take and get some arduino shield uh, development shields these are like perf boards you put your chips in there you wire them up they got either you can either use some surface mount and some through a pin and they got some more through holes here and then you put stacking headers on these and then you can stick them on your arduino and then i was going to probably do a point to point soldering of all that and or maybe if you see this old school stuff that's wire wrap. That maze a mess. That rat nest is a wire wire wrap. I would have probably done one of those two things and called it a product and then probably draw up the circuit. Well, I didn't get to that as you know, and one of my viewers, actually many of my viewers wanted this product finished. They wanted to be able to just uh, sort of like build it. And one of my viewers, an absolute excellent viewer by the name of Steve Lender, he has a 520S and he wanted it to be done and he did it. He actually took that next step, the hard step. He got out Eagle. This is the second board he's developed. He spun a board. This is a shield for the Arduino, which that input circuit goes on, and then uh, plugs in the Arduino and, and works with a display. He designed it to work with a simple LCD display and finished it. <laughs> and so that's what this community is all about. That's what's so great about this online community, this hacking community is, is I took a lot of information. I learned about frequency counting and using Arduino from other people. I built up a prototype. I couldn't finish it. I didn't have time. Another, another person on the internet on, in the community decides he wants to take it from that step and everyone shares and makes it open and we all benefit. My friend will now have once I populate this, my friend will have a frequency display for his radio. Now he's making it completely open source. He's you could you could download the board file and, and cut your own board if you wanted. He's made the software open source on his website. All the links to his stuff will be in the show notes. He's made the bomb list available, meaning you can get the list from his website or you can just go to Mauser using his link and you'll see a link for all the chips and components and stuff that you need almost everything not everything because this you know you are kind of building this on your own but well, certainly all the chips everything you can get from Mauser will be on that uh, bomb list from Mauser and then for some of the other components like the like the display and the RCA connections and the headers and stuff etc cetera, etc cetera, that is another build list that uh, Steve has saved at uh, at SparkFun. So get a board from Steve, complete an order from Mauser, complete an order from SparkFun, and put it together and you're done. Uh, it's amazing. I just love the community work like this. So let's, uh, let's populate this board and then we'll go over to Steve's and test it. And that should be it. We're done. So a recap, this is the three phase lock loops for the BFO, VFO, and HFO. The HFO has to go through a divide by eight. Those three signals go into a multiplexer. The Arduino controls which one it looks at one at a time through the multiplexer to the, the timer counter pin. These circuits will get populated on here. We have the, those three phase lock loops, the divide by eight, and the multiplexer. We'll look at this closely here in a second. And then that would plug in here, the LCD plugging into the headers here. I have some of these old basically left and right channel and, and video cables. So those just plug in one, two, and three, and that's how the signals will come in. And then there'll be some headers. Uh, these are stackable headers. You'll get these, if you get the bomb list from SparkFun, you'll get the stackable header as one of the items to get. And that just allows you to then stack something else on top of that. My original plan was to then put Adafruit LCD shield on top of it. So that would have stacked on top of that. But Steve says that the counting pin isn't working with this shield, so he went with just a simple LCD. Well, this is version five of, of Steve Lender's shield. It's looking really, really well. 
Got the three inputs, they come into some DC blocking capacitors, some diode protection. Then he's got stackable header pins for the Arduino. They are all labeled on them. Everything silk screened really nice. There's an adjustable pot for the contrast on the LCD. There's a, a bunch of bypass capacitors scattered about as necessary. There's a DC input barrel jack, which goes into a five volt regulator portion of the circuit right here. You might ask why do you want a DC, another DC regulator circuit if you have one on the Arduino? Well, if you're not using the USB, the USB comes in at five volts, supplies this to five volts, everything's five volts, it'd be, it'd be happy. This circuit, using the LCD that Steve was tested, draws too much current, meaning the voltage drop from, from 12 volts down to the five volts through this regulator would be uh, too much of a voltage drop. This isn't set up or configured to have enough big enough heat sink. If you used an LCD that uses less current, then you could use just this and not populate this. Or just power from your computer, it won't matter. Or don't power from the radio. Power from something that's closer to five volts, something like a nine volt would be fine too. So we're ready to, uh, to assemble. I have my chips here and I have a well-stocked parts bin so I did not have to use Steve's link for Mauser but I did check it out it is a nice link that just you link to it and everything you need for these components are on the list you just say yes add to cart and buy it if you go to the Steve's web page which is linked in the show notes and at Todd fun you'll see all the build information and as well as the bombs and there's a link to the spark fun and you just you just go there and you say yes add to cart on everything and you get ta-da Spark Fun sends you all the little bits you need in a little cute little red box. These are the these are for the display. Let's see, this is the this is the display that uh, a two by sixteen display. That's really nice. And then these will just be used to poke it up to the shield. And then we get the RGAs. We get. I ordered a few extra of these stackable head pins because I do a lot of Arduino stuff and I burn through these pretty quick. And then DC power jack. Now for now for the power, I have I always save these things and when when the things go bad, I just save the little pigtail of it. And I want this to go to the radio so that the radio will power this circuit. Go to Steve's site for the build because he has. I'll include the link to the final version 1.5. That's what this is and he's got instructions on how to put it in, what things to worry about, and it's basically a step-by-step -step instruction. Okay, time to solder it up, and I'll show off some photos. I have some high-res photos at toddfun.com of what I do. So the build is done, everything's put together. I didn't put the chips in yet because I wanted to make sure that there was no shorts, and I turned on the power real slow to make sure the regulator come on. I don't know if you can tell that light is on. I just wanna make sure that this was fine and the current was down you know, just enough to draw, draw that light. Okay, the, all the components are off of here and on to here. Here's a different one of those. And that's ready to be powered up. I got my current limit on and I'm gonna go ahead and start turning up the voltage until, and it should regulate itself even without the Arduino, it's got its own built-in regulator. Current didn't get over more than 20 milliamps because we're not driving really anything right now. I've uploaded Steve Lender's code into the Arduino and notice I did put a couple layers of uh, electrical tape over there so I won't get any shorts with these RCA jacks over the bottom. I did make them very very short. I trimmed them up really short and then soldered them. Actually I trimmed them and then soldered them in really short. That gives me a little more room and there's a little piece of electrical tape here. A couple layers there so it won't short out on your uh, in-circuit serial programmer that is on your Arduino. Look for anything else that might short out metal-wise, metal to metal, before you put a shield on. I'm going to power from the top one, which has the larger 5-volt regulator. These are the wires that actually come from SparkFun on that order, bomb order. This is the display from that. And you hook them up. You just make sure that 1 through 6 and 11 through 16 go to the same here. They're marked 1 through 6 and 11 through 16. So red up here goes to number one down here and red over here goes to number 11 down here and then those will hook up and that makes it real easy and they're not even that long so it's perfect for getting it in a box I'll start turning up the power you should see the power light come on and then display when it's gets enough juice come up on five yep we're already at six we're getting red light oh I see a display coming on seven volts yeah that's looking good and I'll take her all the way up to about 14 because that's about what the radio will output through the back power supply. It doesn't have any frequency right here yet. 
it's not hooked up to the radio, but this is uh, KV60. Um, that's the call sign of Steve Lender. And then, uh, and that's also his webpage.com. And then he calls us a DG5 emulator version 1.5 frequency. The L stands for lower, it would, if it were calculating, it will tell you if you're in lower sideband, upper sideband, or CW. There is a, a contrast adjust on here. So let's see, we should be able to make it too dark. Uh -huh. And we should be able to make it too light, right? So we just want to get that right. To show the backlight, I turned off all my lights in my lab, and now I'm going to turn off my desk lamp. Yeah, the camera adjusts the best it can, but I, it's really comfortable to the eye. It's not too bright. It's just enough to see, so it's that's a perfect setting. Okay, time to build a box for this. Well, there you go. The box is done. I painted it black. Got an opening for all the stuff in the back. Got some feet on there. Got the display in there nice. Got a little overhang here just for, you know, just for looks. I guess we could plug it in and see it working. And there we go. No frequencies yet, right? Because we don't have it hooked up to a radio yet. I do have the entire build of this uh, box. It'll be uploaded as a separate video. Maybe even more than one video because it, it was a lot to build the box. You, it would have been much much more convenient just to buy something but hey it looks nice it's custom no one else will have one so i'll upload those videos later so off over to steve's to see it working okay we're over at steve's he's got his uh, kenwood 520s all warmed up and ready to go we've got the new frequency counter with uh, steve lender's circuit board in there and arduino and everything the software's running seems like it's working let's take a close look at it and then we're going to make a contact to see if it's uh, going to help us do that just fine. Okay, there's the uh, frequency counter in its new little box. Cables come out the back and hook up as always. And as you turn your knob here, nice and sensitive. And we don't need to worry about where the dial is because this box is doing the calculations for you. Now we're supposed to meet Larry, who is WD0AKX. He's in Minnesota, and he has a YouTube channel where he also films this stuff. It is called Radio Ham Guy. That's his YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the show notes below if you want to see his footage of this. For now, though, we have to meet Larry. We're going to try and meet him at 7.254. So Steve, the owner of this radio, is going to tune in to see if he can pick up Larry. Volume. Tuning. WD zero AKX WD zero AKX. This is KB seven KWK Mesa Arizona. KB seven KWK. Uh, good evening, Steve. The WD zero AKX here. I've got you dialed in here at seven dot two five four point zero QSL. Uh, QSL. Uh, right now I am at uh, seven dot two five four dot five five here. Uh, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, for the most natural sounding voice on you here, but I could tune around a little bit more if you want. Okay, I got you pretty good right here. I, I talked to the tech the other day and uh, sounds like the radio may need a little bit of an alignment. So uh, my buddy Steve will be uh, checking that out. So I think the free counter is working just fine. It's the, uh, on the receive side, transmits off a little bit. So that's why you're up at uh, 0.55. Okay, very good. That makes sense. So uh, your signal is actually increasing here a little bit, so the copy is pretty good right now. You know, I'm going to go ahead and hand uh, Todd the mic and let him chat at you for a minute. Okay, uh, go ahead there, Todd. KF7NBI. How you doing there tonight, Todd? Oh, I'm doing great, Larry. Thanks for helping out with this project and, and testing this. Uh, the frequency counter is actually helping us uh, make these contacts. Really appreciate that. Um, I'm going to put a link to your uh, to your YouTube channel in this channel in this uh, video too, uh, so people can check out your video because you're making a video too on this contact. That's that really helps out too, so people can see how you're tuning into us. It really worked out great. Um, so back to you, uh, Larry, and, and thanks or thanks very much for helping us out with this KS7 MBI. Okay, Todd, very good. Uh, yeah, that sounds great, and uh, I'll be interested in seeing the final product there and uh, your 
your video on this uh, device so it'll be interesting to see and you have a great channel there keep it up and uh, thanks for the link to my channel here also so anyhow I'm hearing you quite well here tonight and uh, good luck with your project there Todd okay KF7 MDI clear well, that's it subscribe thanks, thanks for joining KV7 KWK will be clear for now bye bye